Hello and welcome. Diesel bug. What's diesel bug? Well, more of us are finding out, unfortunately, bit by bit. I think it might be even viewed as a little bit scary. It's certainly scary if the results are a cut-out engine for you, and especially when you're in close quarters. There is, however, plenty you can do to not get it. I think it's probably easiest if we start somewhere near the beginning. In the diesel tank. This is a diesel tank. Let's add a fuel supply to the engine. Let's have a return back to the tank to leak off air. Let's add a means of filling the tank. Let's add a venting system. And if it's a really good tank, let's have a drain. And then let's add some fuel. The area above the fuel, we'll call it A. A is equal to the atmospheric air pressure because that's what it's made up of and B is obviously the fuel oil. Okay, let's break it down a little bit more. The oil's the diesel, the fuel oil. Nowadays it's biodiesel. The bio parts are a green element that we're adding into diesel to be that little bit greener now. But it does have a bit of a side effect. It's hydroscopic, which means it likes to drink water. But there's no water in our tank, you say? Well, that's not exactly true. As long as there's atmosphere in the tank, there's water. And the more atmosphere there is, the more water there is. A reduction in air pressure will increase the amount of water that's held in the atmosphere. Drops in temperature will also do the same thing. Now a lot of this water would have made its way in and out the tank as the atmosphere went in and out the tank. But more of it's now being absorbed with the biodiesels drinking it. Well as far as I can remember, while we've had diesel and tanks to vent in the atmosphere, we've always had a bit of water in the bottom of the tank. If we drain our tank every now and then, we'll shift most of the water out. Otherwise, when there's a bit of bad weather, the water will end up going up our feed pipe. If it travels up the feed pipe, then we're reliant on the first filter in line as a water separator to catch it all. So our engine carries on running happily with just diesel. Okay, so what is diesel bug? Well, it's quite easy, really. It's microorganisms that live in the water and when combined with the water trapped with a little bit of fuel start to grow in the right conditions. Well this is nothing new and good hygiene of your fuel system will keep these little devils at bay. Although they're getting a little bit more popular nowadays with new fuels sucking more water in you can still get rid of them quite easy and keep them banished. Your first line of defence is making sure the fuel that you use isn't contaminated. Well, how do you do that? Well, it's easy. When you get the nozzle, don't stick it blindly into your tank. As anything in the tank will be passed on along with the diesel. Fill up using a filter funnel in between the nozzle and your tank. This is what I mean by a filter funnel. One with a fine gauze down the bottom to catch all the debris. After filling up in one marina, I look down the bottom and I see that black sludge. And I know what that black sludge is. That's your diesel bug. So why put it in your tank because somebody's already made it in their tank if you don't have to? And that's why a funnel's important. Number one in the defence. Number two in my defence league to save this nasty black horrible stuff growing in your tank or passing it in there. Is absolutely don't use the dark diesel containers to cant any fuel into. Use a red one like this, because you can see in the bottom and you can see it spotlessly clean even with the diesel in. The black ones you can't see into and you can't see diesel bug down there, so you can't have confident fuel leaving with you. And finally, the third line of defense, which you've already worked out now, is every time you finish with the boat, fill the tank up. If there's no space for atmosphere in there, there's no moisture you're gonna get in there. And less moisture equals less chances of bug. Okay, just before the start, I haven't run the engine this year. It's the end of January, but I haven't run it since the last time I was out really in November, which is despicable because I like to run it once a year so that the um, pulleys don't rust up where the fan belts run. 
because they otherwise they rust up and then need the fan belts the next year but I've just had a quick look at them and they're all right so I'm not too bad so I'll get the engine started and give it a warm up make sure everything's you mustn't forget to turn the walk to that I'll give it a minute to warm up and then we'll stop it and do some winter servicing. I'll just map out my uh, diesel system so you've got the same plan as I have in my head. The supply and return of these two pipes over here, that one and that one, that's supply, that's return. The supply goes down to a handheld pump there that you can squash to push the fuel through the system. Onto that filter there, which is my first filter. Down this pipe down to the bottom of the engine where the low pressure pump is commonly known as a lift pump it runs off the camshaft just there that then pipes round a little small rubber hose to the engine filter which is to protect the diesel pump which is next in line just there from any debris that could come from the first filter or from the pump itself and then up to the high pressure pump which is down there along those hard lines and to the injectors along there and from the injectors on the last injector at the end over there you can see that rubber pipe there that one there coming off meets the supply pipe and then they go back to the tank that's a rusty outlet pipe and that's a ru uh, starting to rust inlet pipe on this filter that i'm not quite happy with so i'm going to use this my filter extraction tool to take it off but first I need to get to these little taps down here those two red devils and turn them across so that they shut off the supply and return to and from my fuel system and then I'm going to replace my old filter housing with this new little devil with a window in it so I can see what's going on in the world okay fuel taps are off let's get the filter off they seem to go so tight filters when you've been on for 12 months but you only have to normally give them about half a turn and they're ready to come off. See, that feels plenty free now, so it's just a case of taking the tool off and spinning it off with my hand. I then normally stick a plastic container underneath to catch the diesel and the filter, of course. And that way you can see what was in there when it all comes out. And if there's anything really nasty sitting around, it's normally sitting on the top of the filter. If there's any bug got to the filter, it's normally resting on the top of the filter. But the fuel here looks quite clean, so that's quite pleasing. If this bug had travelled my fuel line, it would have been in this diesel in this container now. Alright, I've unbolted the um, old filter head off the little bulkhead at the back there, where I'm going to replace the new one. There's the old one sitting there with its wonky arms. And there's the nice new one to go in the place. Bolt hole dimensions for mounting it were exactly the same, so nothing needed to be changed at all. The hoses will make the distance, so I don't have to actually do anything besides two nuts and bolts and two Jubilee clips, so it's quite an easy transformation. Note the Volvo feed pipes were smooth, but the uh, cav ones have got a barb on the end. I much prefer the barb, because that's no way that clip's ever going to pull off with that pipe. Or that one there either. This is the next filter I've got to do. It's a little ticky filter. I can often get this just by putting a screwdriver against the side of the case in there and pushing that. I've actually got a sprung C-spanner, but I haven't got it with me, so I'll probably end up putting the screwdriver against one of the castle tops and tapping it with an hammer. Well, here it is. It comes off. It's spotless. It looks like it went on 12 months ago. The filter's in perfect condition, but that doesn't mean it's going back in. Next, with the fuel still in the filter bowl, 
I want to take a look inside and see if I can see anything hanging round down the bottom down there. Well, it actually doesn't look too bad. There might be a little dot, I think, but nothing more than that. So then I'll just pour it out and have a look at what's left after I've done so and see if any sediment comes out as I pour it. Well, those little ticky dots are just the castings at the bottom of the bowl, so there's no worries there. Nothing's got through to that devil. I just get the new filter, take it to the engine, not with the bowl, just on its own. And it just slides up inside the house and you feel it locate and it slides up about half an inch and you know it's solid on there, it's going nowhere. And then you get the bowl, put a new O-ring around it, little black O-ring runs around the outside there. New O-ring on it, wet the O-ring with a bit of diesel and then fit that bit in the same way you took it off. And that's both filters replaced, now we need to bleed up the system. And I think we'll start with the first in line, this fella. Well, I've loosened the bleed on the top of this filter housing now. All the other bleeds are closed. And I'm going to turn the fuel supply and return on. Return first and then the supply. And then just watch as the magic of gravity does its work. I think I can actually see a little foreign body floating around in there. But it's in the bottom of the bowl, so it'll stay there forever, so I'm not going to worry about it. Bit of fluff, or spider or something, I don't know. Anyway, she'll fill up really quickly. she got the pressure of a full tank there, and she'll come squirting out that back one there, and I'll have to wang it down as quick as I can, so as not to get a puddle on the floor. And there she comes, plenty of pressure there from gravity. Wang that up, i got a rag underneath it so there's none of that diesel going down the bilge, hopefully. Then exactly the same as the first filter, the second filter, which is a little ticky one on the engine. Back the screw off on that and then wait for the fuel to get to there. Lock the bowl bleed as soon as it comes out and then you can just make sure the fuel's up onto the pipe output line as well. This is my last bleed in the system, it's the one on the high pressure pump. Well, mine is actually just on the banjo enough for the high pressure pump where the, the uh, fuel supply line comes up to the pump. There's all, always a little Phillips screw head in these to make bleeding easy. So as soon as you've let, broke her off, you can put it back on. You can see the fuel coming out of that one anyway. I don't know whether you can, but I can. You can bleed from here with the engine running as well. It's a good idea after you've played with the fuel system to let it run for a good half hour before you think about taking it out of the dock or wherever you are. Just in case there is any problems, you need to go round all your lines now and make sure that they're all bone dry as well. I put some tissue paper down in different places where I think there's a possibility of gaining a leak. And then I check the tissue paper periodically while she runs to make sure that there's no drips coming off anything. And my final check normally is going to the bleed, the last bleed, which is on the high pressure pump while the engine's running. This one over here. And letting that go and letting fuel come out of it. Now the fuel should be under pressure at this point to here because it's being pushed up by the lift pump. If you've got a little bit of air being drawn into the engine at some point, releasing this a small amount will allow the engine to carry on running and clear the air, which will get your own, but you do have to monitor it. The last thing I want to do is take a bit of diesel out of the tank, from the drain of course, to see what's down there, see if there's anything that's really nasty. I'm very lucky this tank's got a sump in it, so everything will gather in the area of the sump and the taps fitted there. So just blow a bit of fuel off into there and let's see what we've got. Well, this is the contents of my tank. Most of that there is just dirt. But the little black things you see floating around that move like water, well, they're bug. So there is a bit of bug in the bottom of my tank, but it's only small and it's not grouped. Well, I'm not sure where I'll have picked her up. One stupid moment somewhere, no doubt. Um, or it may have already been there for a long time. I'll add a little bit of uh, diesel bug treatment to it. There's enough of them on the market and see if I can control it that way. 
but the main thing for me is to flush a bit off every now and then and see if it gets any worse or any better and not to allow any new stuff to grow don't forget if you keep the moisture out of your tank you're nipping it in the bud oh and another good reason i changed the filter over from the volvo type to the cav type was the cav's got a drain on it where the volvo one doesn't have a draining system on it so i can't drain any water off plus i can see any water that builds up not that any will and um, the final thing was the filters are they're cheap for the cav one so you can afford to have a lot on board and buy a lot should you ever get in any trouble quick rundown on the diesel system you've got your tank with the supply and the return you've got your first filter in line which will have a bleed on it after that you've got a pump which is normally a low pressure pump commonly a lift pump then you've got the final filter which protects the high pressure pump and the high pressure pump of course supplies the injector with the fuel which is going to make the engine run okay that's all the components let's see what happens stick a bit of fuel in the tank we've got fuel in the tank it's going to go up the supply line because it's going to get sucked up there by the low pressure pump it's going to get sucked into the filter the first filter and then sucked all the way to itself from there it's going to get pushed to the next filter so now it's under pressure and it goes through that filter under pressure to the next pump the high pressure pump once it's got into the high pressure pump it's going to be under extreme pressure to the injector and that's time to make your engine run and squirts out the injector at just the right moment after the injector what's left goes back to the tank to return and that's the circuit now i've stuck an a here and a b here between anywhere between a and b is a low pressure area this is the cause of most breakdowns on a diesel because a low pressure area that has a hole in it just draws air into the system and causes the engine to run badly. Normally first noted by a hunting engine, then an engine that won't rev too well and then an engine that stops. Now you've got between C and D here. This is the pressurised side of the fuel system. You would not normally break down if you had a leak here. You would just normally have a leak until it emptied your tank into the bilge and then you'd break down. Far easier to see, I think. Oh, and the last tip I've got for you. The pickup in the tank where the supply comes from normally goes to the bottom of the tank, just here. Well, I would recommend you left an half inch, three quarter inch gap so you never pick up what's at the bottom of the tank again. And hopefully you'll drain off any harmful bug or water that's developed down there. Even if you won't be able to use the last half pint of diesel, you'll be much happier in the knowledge that you can't collect the crap from the bottom of the tank. I hope I haven't bored you too much with my diesel bug and diesel systems. And I hope you at least got something out of it that's useful to yourselves. So if you've watched all the way to now, thanks very much for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Till then, bon voyage.